time for our speaker, uh, Javier Aguilar, uh, works for Southern California Area Government. Um, he's a senior regional planner in the research and analysis department. So um, we're gonna be talking about um, the uh, aerial survey, aerial information, GIS data. I'm not gonna like t talk about what his talk's about, I'm gonna let him talk about it. So uh, everybody, Javier Aguilar. So a shout out to Lacey, the place we're at. Thanks, guys, for letting us use the space. And on to Javier. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, happy day before GIS Day. <laughs> so um, basically, I'm going to talk about the Aerial Imagery uh, Initiative. Um, I've been going around the Skag region. Uh, last week I was in Orange County and also in Imperial County, so I feel like I'm running for office, <laughs> campaigning for this project. So um, basically, let me tell you a little bit about GIS. GIS, when people hear GIS, they mainly think it's software, but in reality, it's five different components. It's software, it's hardware, Yes, it's data, it's procedures, and it's people. So today I'm here to talk about the data component of it. Um, for two reasons, because we know like with every system, if you put garbage in, garbage out, right? And also with GIS, like, or with data, 80% of data is geographic. So if you have a spreadsheet that has a partial number or an address or an X, Y, you can map it. So lots of data you can map, all right? So <coughs> let me tell you a little bit about my organization. It's called the Southern California Association of Governments. If you look us up in Google, it's SCAG. There's two things come up. It's uh, the Association, uh, Southern California Association of Government, and it's also a land more, uh, a land more company. So it's, uh, we're the other one, we're the government organization. So SCAG, we're about 38,000 square miles. That's about the size of Ohio in terms of geographic area. Um, in terms of population, we're over uh, 19 million people, so that approaches up to the state of New York or Florida. So we're pretty big area as well. We're comprised of 191 cities, six counties. Um, we're the 16th largest economy in the world. So basically get, that gives you the scale of the area that we cover. So in terms of, in terms of uh, location, uh, in terms of our mandate, why do we care about data? These are some areas of why we, what we do, but the two main ones are we're, we, uh, we also want to be like the data uh, hub for uh, the, the region, and we also want to cover and address uh, areas of regional significance. Okay, so what's the purpose of the collaboration? We want to meet, proactively meet base needs of our constituents. So we want to address operational needs. We want to address emergency occurrences, both uh, man-made and natural. And we want to also um, address local, uh, new federal and, and state mandates such as NextGen 911 and for the water agencies, SB 606 and AB 1668, which deals with water budgets. We also want to share and collaborate data to our stakeholders and establish standards and consistencies among data sets. And again, we also want to collaborate acquisition and creation of data sets that benefit all our jurisdictions and stakeholders. So where do we start? We want to start with aerial imagery because it's a tangible data set. 
lot of us use Aerials. Um, also in 2020, it's gonna, all, all the counties within our region are thinking of flying it. So we're saying, you know, it's not only a benchmark year 2020, but it also gives us an opportunity to collaborate in order to get a better product and also get a better product and also get pay less money for it. And also we would have the ability to get our, our, our hands on data outside our region because it's important to know what's happening within our jurisdiction, but what's happening outside our jurisdiction is also important. And also basically with these data sets with consistency and standards, we could compare apples to apples and potentially would have all these data sets in one place. So what's the objectives? We want to obtain high accuracy imagery to support local jurisdictions needs, um, to look at land uses and asset management, pre-engineering, also unify imagery acquisitions to improve communications and integrate and related products with the SCAG databases and under geographic data sets, and also to save taxpayer money and also organizations some money. Okay, this is the current, current status of imagery in our, in our area. There's different years and different resolutions. So basically what we wanna do is we want to create a standard, you know, one resolution or two resolutions, uh, one in the urban core and one in the rural areas, and also to acquire it within the same time period. So we can have apples to apples comparisons. So if you would, if you look, the resolutions are from three inch all the way to one foot, and the years of acquisition are from 2014 all the way to 2018. So we want some consistency and some standards. So we've done some research uh, to get this information, you know, to get the status, but also try to come up with a new alternative. So we've gone to around, we've gone to around five counties, we've talked to federal agencies, sub-regions, we've att attended uh, several GIS meetings to discuss this. Um, we've done several calls. We've done a white paper and contact list and an online survey to come up with a solution or with an alternative. And this would be the, uh, the proposal alternative, uh, three inch in the urban core and six inch in the other areas. If you look at the white space, that's uh, San Bernardino County, that area is usually not covered because it's a desert area and currently it's not covered. Currently it's not covered and also it, it's a large area and that would increase the cost. So what we're proposing, we're gonna be releasing an RFQ hopefully at the end of this month. What we're proposing is to get um, orthos, infrared, at three and six inch obliques, which is a 45 degree, 45 degree angle of, of the imagery. So you can look at ingress and egress, building outlines, elevations, and also like a software where you wouldn't really need like the commercial GIS to look at it and also hosting of the data, because these are gonna be huge data sets. So what we've done in the process, um, we've met three times. We met at Riverside County Assessors. We met at, uh, that was at the end of May. We met at Orange County Public Works, which was in July. And in September, we met at the Skag Main offices. And in a few days, we're going to, we're going, 
we're going to check in with the group, with the stakeholders, to tell them, you know, what's the status of the RFQ um, based on a stakeholder working group that we have, you know, to give us insights on the RFQ. And also, we're developing a cost model to figure out what's important is, you know, how much you're going to pay to be part of this consortium. And lastly, we want to enlist more stakeholders. So right now, we're reaching out to different groups, like this group today. We're reaching out to water groups and also uh, school districts and so forth. And we're also getting insights from other regional consortiums, such as uh, the Sacramento Council of Governments and the Denver Regional Council of Governments. Um, they've been doing something close to this, but um, at a lot smaller scale. Um, Denver, their, their area is less than half, and, and I guess um, the, San Gu uh, the Sacramento Council of Governments is about 4,000 square miles. The, the, what we're looking at is 24,000 square miles. That's about the size of a you know, that's the size of a small country or, or a state. And with the data sets that we're looking at, you know, three inch and six inch, I mean, that's a lot of data, especially with orthos and obliques. Okay, so these are our stakeholders. We have representatives from all the different, um, from all, from the different, from different counties and from water districts. And what are our next steps? You know, um, basically we're gonna be releasing the RFQ. We're also looking into grants to lessen the cost of participation. Um, we're looking at Caltrans grants and also SCAG has a grant out um, for future communities. You know, to um, that some counties could apply for, which we're encouraging them to do, and we're also looking for new partners like school districts, universities, utility companies, and others. And tomorrow, we're not going to set a meeting, but we're going to have a check-in uh, via. I'm going to send an email to tell folks of the uh, the status, and hopefully, we're going to meet again at SCAG at the middle or at the end of January, and where we are hoping to get, um, we're hoping to get responses from the RFQ. So, um, previous experience we had with this, we built a consortium in Imperial County. We had participation of all the cities and the county and the water district, Caltrans, but now we're looking at a bigger scale. Um, we managed the project, and hopefully we're hoping to do that here, or or uh, also or help the different consortiums. The challenges that we're having is there's different levels of sophistication with the data, and there's different levels of experience with consortiums. Funding is also a challenge. Technology is a challenge because basically we don't know. Um, if there's a company, one company or a team of companies that can do this project. So that's why we're doing the RFQ. So um, contracting, it's always a challenge. You know, if you work in government, you kind of know that. Um, timelines, um, again, we relieved to this RFQ, releasing the RFQ. Um, 30th, and we're hoping to get responses in the middle of January. So, if you guys have any questions.